Welcome back to Book Break. Today we are talking about books about books. Just my favourite subgenre and maybe the most perfect topic for book lovers to be reading about. And I have just been feeling even more grateful than usual for books recently. So if it is safe for you, why not visit your local indie bookshop and show them some love, thank them for all of the joy they continue to bring us, particularly in stressful times. And maybe while you're there, you can buy any of these books on my list. When it comes to books about books, obviously there are wonderful examples like The Book Thief or The Shadow of the Wind, which are really famous examples of this genre. I have tried in today's video to put together a list of books that you might not have already read. And this is a mix of fiction and non-fiction. Either way, this is a list for true book lovers. So to kick us off, I want to recommend the brand new book, Dear Reader by Kathy Rensenbrink. This is a real love letter to books. It's all about the comfort and joy that books can bring us. So Kathy Rensenbrink says that she has been losing herself in books for as long as she can remember. But particularly when tragedy struck in her own life, it was books that kept her afloat. And I think so many of us will be able to relate to that feeling that no matter how stressful or hard things have been in our life, books have always been there for us, not to sound super cheesy. So Dear Reader is a really moving but also a really funny and joyful book that's all about celebrating books and all that they bring us and how they can genuinely change your life. And it's packed with book recommendations as well from one true book lover to another. And knowing how important books are in helping us through our lives, the next book I want to talk about is Well Read Black Girl by Glory Eden. So this is all about the importance of representation and who gets to see themselves in stories. It's an anthology collected by Glory Eden of essays written by black women on the theme of finding themselves in literature. And Glory Eden is really passionate about this. She's actually the founder of the Well Read Black Girl book club, which is based in Brooklyn and is really a space for black voices to be uplifted. And now taking that idea that books can genuinely change your life, I have a fiction recommendation. This is The Girl Who Reads on the Metro by Christine Ferry Fleury. And this is a very quirky little book about a woman called Juliet who is given a job by a mysterious bookseller. He gives her the mission of passing on the perfect books to strangers at the perfect time in their life. And Juliet has this real talent for finding each person the exact right book that they need to change their life at that moment. I'd like her to come recommend me a book now. And then there's Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin, which is a super sweet romance story about two men who meet at a romance book club. One of them is a romance lover, the other one not so much, but he joins the book club anyway as a way of them getting to spend more time together. Together. So it's a really sweet story. You get representation of book lovers, which are always the best characters to read about, and it's also quite meta, so you get to watch the romance tropes that they're talking about play out in their own story. And for another really heartwarming one, you should read The Reader on the 627 by Jean-Paul Didier Laurent. So this is about a man who works at a book pulping factory, and he is a book lover, so he absolutely hates this job. But every day on the 627 train that he takes, he reads aloud from one of the books he's managed to save from the pulping machine. But then one day, he finds a diary of a woman called Julie, who turns out to be just as lonely in the world as he is. So again, it's a really sweet story about books bringing people together and uplifting people's lives. And then for an older book with a similar theme, there's Too Loud a Solitude by Bohemil Harabal. So this is about a man who works as a paper crusher in Prague under a police state, and again, rescues books to take home for his own reading. So we have similar concepts here, but actually very different books. The Reader on the 627 is much more of a quirky, heartwarming book club book, whereas Too Loud a Solitude is much more philosophical and political. A lot of it is about about censorship. But they are both ultimately very funny and they are both, of course, about celebrating the power of the written word. And while we're talking about censorship, I have another non-fiction recommendation here for a real-life example of literature changing people's lives. So this is Reading Lolita in Tehran by Aza Nafisi. This is a memoir of Aza Nafisi's time spent as a professor at the University of Tehran in the 70s and 80s, when the government were imposing stricter and stricter regulations on what books she was allowed to teach and on what women were allowed to do and wear. So Azana Fisi started a book club for some of her female students where they would meet up in secret and read forbidden western works, like for example, as the title suggests, Lolita. 
Okay, back to fiction. We have Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai Cj. So this one is set during the Chinese Cultural Revolution and it follows two city boys who are sent to a rural farming village and there they meet the daughter of a local tailor and both fall in love with her. But they also find a hidden treasure trove of translated literature and both the boys and the daughter of the tailor finds that these books change their lives in really unexpected ways. But maybe the biggest life-changing moment comes in The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett, when the Queen of England discovers a little mobile library and becomes completely obsessed with reading. She actually decides she doesn't want to carry out any of her royal duties anymore, she just wants to stay and read. Very relatable. It's a very short, very funny little novella I really recommend. Then a book that delves into the art of writing itself is Mr Fox by Helen Oyeyemi. So Mr Fox is a writer and Mary Fox, with an E, is his muse. He wrote her into existence and now she is back to challenge him. So this one really plays with the art of storytelling. Mr Fox and Mary take turns writing stories, challenging each other to this game, but the reader is never quite sure who is writing which story and where fiction meets reality. Poetry lovers, we haven't forgotten about you. Off the Shelf is a collection of poetry that celebrates bookshops. Such a lovely idea and this was put together by Carol Ann Duffy. And a collection of the poets that contributed to this book actually went on tour together in 2016 and again in 2018, visiting bookshops across the UK, doing poetry reading and really celebrating those wonderful places, bookshops, that just feel like home when we step inside them. And finally, finishing up with two more non-fiction books that talk about the experience of being a book lover. Bookworm by Lucy Mangan is a memoir of the author's childhood spent as a book lover. So she talks about so many of the beloved books that we all grew up reading and also discusses which books might go on to inspire a future generation of book lovers. And lastly, The Gifts of Reading is an anthology where we get to hear from some of the world's most beloved writers all about the gifts that reading has brought to them. So we have essays in here from Philip Pullman, Candace Carty-Williams, Chigozi Obioma, Jackie Morris and so many more and the collection was inspired by an essay by Robert McFarlane which begins with the wonderful line this story like so many stories begins with a gift the gift like so many gifts was a book so I would love to hear some of your book recommendations that fit this theme all about books and bookshops. So many of my favourite books fall into this category. And I've also put together a playlist for you to browse through here of book break videos that were filmed at some of our favourite bookshops. So many happy memories there. And we will see you next time.